Happy Saturday, Lang Golf Academy members and guests. Today, we're going to take a look at the PJ Tour's top 10 most funky swings that made it to the upper elite level of golf. And this is their list, not mine. What is push for the truth of the golf swing? Here's a story of a coach named Tony. What? Who has seen so many shady swings? All of them had compensations, even those with kicks. <laughs> Sorry, of a coach named Tony, who has seen so many golf charge keys. He got tired of fixing issues, never seen slices as big as cheese. Till the one day when he got so fed up. With the state of the golf instruction hood All these plastic crap around his stupid shoulders Did more damage than good The Shady Bunch, the Shady Bunch That's the way we became the Shady Bunch Um, let's watch some videos. I don't know what that was about, but I looked at the back of the remote and it said Temu, so that could explain some things. But what does Bubba Watson, Paul Azinger, Arnold Palmer, Hubert Green, John Daly, Calvin Pete, Alan Doyle, Jim Thorpe, Lee Trevino, and Jim Furyk have in common? Well, they fall under the other variants in terms of golf swing fundamentals and their playing style. And so there isn't a comprehensive, definitive breakdown of all the swing styles in the PGA Tour past and present, but I can break them down into four general styles based on our observations and analysis over the years and they are traditional classic swing stack and tilt modern athletic swing and the other variants these 10 individuals fall other variant category now the traditional swings account for about 40 to 50 percent of current and past golfers many past legends like jack nicholas ben hogan exemplified the style it is still widely used today by many players as well now the stack and tilt peaked at about the 2000s. I can argue it started with the invention of steel clubs, but it adopts for about 5 to 10% at its height, but it has declined since. But there are some people out there that swear by stack and tilt. Now, the modern athletic swing is the current swing that we see on tour. Many players like Rory McIlroy, Dustin Johnson, they adopt a more athletic, dynamic style, and they focus on generating power through a combination of strength and technique, and it could account for about 30 to 40% of current players now we fall into the other category which is what this video is about the other variants they include variations like open close stance unique adaptations by individual players and currently on tour it's about 10 to 15 percent now what does this all mean for you well let's start breaking it down because i hear so many people trying to copy swings and but you know it comes down to your individual development now everybody on screen here you can tell that they have a completely different motion than each other but they were able to reach the top of of their elite level in the world at their time some of them even claiming number one world ranking so with that all being said what can we learn about this it comes down to your grip alignment set of posture not everybody's fundamentals are going to be different than each other's obviously we teach fundamentals in the golf swing a good coach always falls back on fundamentals but those fundamentals can and will change based on you as an individual so let's break down the swing of each of these individuals a quick breakdown and talk about how they make the swing work and what they share with each other and how this could maybe give you some confidence to work with your swing knowing that maybe you can reach the top of your level and not change to suit the needs or the view of other people. So first up is Bubba Watson. Now Bubba Watson has been notoriously famous for hitting the ball a ton. Now when he was a kid, I read that how he learned to play golf was with a plastic club that his parents bought him and he would learn to shape the golf ball around his living room, out the bathroom, so he learned how to move the ball either way. But he defaulted to this simple swing for him. And you'll see that there's not a lot of weight distribution, but the hands get very high, which will now create some depth and also a good amount of spacing as he comes straight down to to the golf ball but watch the amount of hip rotation so we see a huge amount of hip rotation here paired with a good shoulder rotation 
And when you have this much torque going on your golf swing, things will be a lot of fun, but you do need hands to be very high to make this happen. And as a result, we see that the hands are forming that nice triangle, but they're out in front of his chest. They don't fall back in no man's land where he has to get some timing involved. So what we'll see is as he comes on down through, look at the amount of rotation his hips are able to square up. You see the weighting is on his toes because upright players typically play on their toes because of the amount of spacing that they do have with their upper body. And as he strikes a golf ball, we see that immense amount of tilting and also the hands still remain in front of the chest. Now remember, if I were to take his swing and teach him different fundamentals, he would not be able to get in those positions. And we see it's a very unusual finish because the weighting is off, the foot is moved completely off of his, his, his alignment, which basically shows you this is more of a long drive swing. Now Paul Azinger had a unusual swing. It wasn't as unusual as we have seen, but what we will take a look at is the plane work that he establishes and how it is different than modern day plane. And we see there's the back brace line. We draw a quick little spine angle line and we see the centeredness again from the arches of the heels, most of these guys and girls on this level will fall right in that center. And that is key because as long as you stay in centered, you can start to get away with more. Your hands can move all over the place, but as long as you can stay centered and get your back brace line to stay the same. So we're going to be looking at this line throughout his golf swing. This is the key for anybody on tour. And you see at the top of your swing, we have a nice tucked right elbow. The problem with that is the left arm gets a little bit lower. It will also shallow out his shoulders. And when you shallow out your shoulders some strange things can occur so we see the shallowing occur of his shoulders which will also shallow the hands and arms so now he's falling in the plane line but take a look at where the club is the club is crossing the line based on where his arms are but that's no problem for him because as long as he stays in that back brace line look at this he's maintaining his posture so he's, he's basically giving himself routine foundations and what this will do is will allow the club to fall in the slot for him he can just deliver that club right on plane let's erase some of these other lines and look at the new spine angle and as long as you can do this look at this he hasn't changed anything that is your key if you are able to stay in your posture from start to, to finish that is the goal but you can only do that if you are centered in your setup if he was toe heavy or heel heavy he would not have the success he has so you can get away with more as long as you are stable and ready to strike the golf ball now let's take a look at the great Arnold Palmer Arnold Palmer was able to create a motion where it utilizes his great strength his great forearm strength but also the amount of rotation that he can accomplish right at impact so you take a look at as he strikes that golf ball we do have slightly open shoulders we have very open hips this is a good swing to try to emulate if you can have the flexibility now the key is flexibility because at the top of his swing you can see in order for him to get his hips to close that much to the target look at his left foot it had to come up to alleviate the pressure for his left knee to buckle in and allow his, his hips to turn which will also allow his shoulders to get a deeper turn now that is good if you can do that now the problem is is most of us cannot do that because we don't play a lot we're not naturally gifted but the key as well is while you have all that turn is can you stay in that posture so we see that his left shoulder is tilting perpendicular to his spine and that is great we don't see an increased turn we don't see a decreased tilt so that is key and as long as you stay in that back brace line so here's his back brace line we will see he's still able to stay on that back brace line and move according to his setup now the grips of all these gentlemen are probably all different now the grip is a big part because the grip plays a role on the body rotation if you have a strong grip you are forcing your body to do more of the work because your hands are out of it if you have a weaker grip your hands are more involved so weaker grips like Jim Furyk we'll see later on he has a typically a weaker grip than let's say Bubba Watson and the reason is because he is a flailing arm player as well as keeping his body against that back brace line now Hubert Green this is a very interesting swing. You can see it's very upright, but he is able to reroute that upright, and that's the key thing. So if we take a look again, the similarities between all these and look at that amount of forward bend that is an extreme amount of forward bend let's take a look at the arches of the heels we can draw the arches of the heels straight up to the sky and we can see that this one is heel based now heel based swings we're going to see some compensatory motions 
The hands initially hinge the club as he pulls his arm straight up to the sky. Not a swing that I would teach or I would focus on, but here's somebody that makes it work. And the key again is let's draw this in green. We see that the shoulder tilt is perpendicular to his spine. Now, this is a very hard thing to do. And if you don't believe me, give it a try. You might hurt yourself, though. So there's no insurance policies here. So don't call me at me with some claim. But most of us cannot do this. And that puts a lot of pressure. So you have to be a certain build. Now, if you take a look because he has to stay more down his arm position cannot go as far back because he's locked his body but that doesn't matter to him because he reroutes that immediately now this rerouting action you can see the club falls down and we take a look at the frame a couple frames before we can see where it was and where it is so this is a huge amount of rerouting but it had to occur because of his very steep spine angle now when you have a very steep spine angle you are going to swing down a lot more than most so this rerouting will also help compensate that as he drops him in the slot we can see he strikes the golf ball and we see a lot of whipping around with his lower body his hips are opening up but his shoulders are still square to the target which is key and as he comes on through a low exit path with his hands and he comes on up and let's back up to right at impact what do you notice again is we are still in his initial spine angle he's against that breath brace line so as long as you can get a swing where you can remain in your spine angle at impact your odds of success jump through the roof matter of fact 99.8 percent of pga tour players current and past hold their spine angle that 0.2 percent they're flukes of nature they just found a way and it's not like they lose a lot of it they move, lose a little bit of it so keep that in mind where probably 99.8% of amateurs lose their spine angle. So there is some correlation between that. So you have to look at why you're losing your spine angle and start to change your basic setup to accommodate that, to give you a fighting chance of staying in your posture. And we have the great John Daly. Now, John, I've done a full diagnosis on John Daly's swing. So if you're interested, you can search my YouTube channel. You'll find it. But the great thing about John is it's so fluid. It is very long. And his thought process was, I'm taking the club far enough back when I can see it on my left eye. So this just rubbed off in his motion and it's just pure timing pure talent but let's again go back to that posture so we're going to draw the spine angle line the back brace line and look at the centeredness check and also where that club started and we can see that again he is pretty close to that centeredness and you'll find this in most of them but take a look at this at impact what do you notice again still in that spine angle still in that posture moving the weight correctly now obviously is moving it correctly because his plane work is also effective it is staying on plane it's probably one of the truer swings in the series to stay on plane but he's still kind of unique because of that long golf swing with the arms now he does get that because of a lot of turn but anytime you add arm motion to your turn you involve timing which is why his swing looks very fluid and smooth it's not herky jerky because he's relying on cracking that whip with his arms calvin pete now calvin pete has another unique swing i noticed that a lot of these unique swings are picking up the club but think about why when these people with children when they started playing this game they probably played with very heavy clubs we didn't have us kids growing up we didn't have ajga with these specialized equipment for kids we just got mom and dad's cut down clubs that were probably very heavy so a lot of these older school players had first moves where they pick up the club because that's all they can do as a kid and then learn to reroute it so you can develop a lot of power that way but one thing that you'll see about calvin upper body is bent a lot more forward and we take a look at where his centeredness is and it's again still pretty centered now i know this camera's a little bit off to the side but you can see it's very centered and we're going to look at how centered it stays now what we will notice is an increase of shoulder tilt down which will allow his spine angle to tip even more down but that could also come at a cost because now his weight is probably more on the toes and he might get stuck so anytime the weight shifts towards the toes what can occur is all of a sudden your centeredness is not on the arches anymore it is more on the balls of your feet now when it's on the balls of your feet that's going to create some issues because now when he comes through you'll see that he will lose a little bit of that spine angle because he shifted his weight towards his toes now doesn't mean it's bad this is that 0.02 percent that loses their spine angle but finds a way to make it work because he is still able to hit the golf ball with incredible talent so this is a very talented motion a homemade swing that found a way to make it work and was able to repeat it at a high level so there are outliers to any situation now alan doyle you watch a swing you might miss the backswing look at how quick that backswing is now people might say it's a very short swing but i say it's a very connected swing and what we'll do is we'll look at a driver swing because this one 
takes the cake and what we'll see is again where is that back brace line we see that a lot of the weight is on his heels right let's take a look how much weight is on that heel so there's the centerness check take a look at this that's the centerness of his his hips it is way back there so let's see what type of compensatory motions he makes as he takes that club back we can see because the weighting so stuck on the heels this limits his turn with his hips and shoulders and that gives him a shorter golf swing it's not necessarily short the hands are still out in front of the chest we can see that they are connected to the center of his chest but he is just has a shorter turn because of that setup but because the weight's on his heels he will stay seated and because he stays seated he slightly increases that angle which allows him to swing more up past impact and free his hands but we still take a look he is relatively on that back brace line and we see those higher hands finishing obviously it's a unique swing and i would not teach it to anybody but if somebody showed up with the swing we would make it work because alan doyle made it work jim thorpe big jim thorpe now this is a man that was just massively strong was able to use that strength but look at that reroute action i mean there's no way that i would see this swing and say that man's on tour but guess what he was on tour and he was pretty successful at it but there's a huge compensatory motion and we take a look at the setup and this setup is unique because it is actually a pretty good setup for how you think the swing's gonna look usually with a swing like that we might think man this setup's gotta be obscure but we don't see that much we see the arch of the heels they're a little bit off of each other but there's kind of split the middle they're kind of supporting that sense in this but when we take a look at the motion we're going to draw back brace line let's see what happens with these arms these arms get nice and low now we come on up so this could be a lack of mobility this could be the way he got more turn so he sacrificed position for turn now when he sacrificed position and turn for him he's going to start to stand up taller when he stand up taller your shoulders level out to that height and then that brings your arms lower because that's just how your body works so now he might have to reroute it but let's take a look so from here he's going to have that drop in the slot like really good players do but because he stood up his slot's going to be much lower so all of a sudden his club is below the plane line that looks like death but look at what he does here he hangs back and increases the tilt to push his hands ahead and that's what gives him this funky swing where you see the increase of shoulder tilt immensely down and then he comes on up so another great player that was able to utilize his fundamental his fundamentals not other fundamentals so be careful what fundamentals you work with and Lee Trevino Lee is probably the prettiest swing out of all of these but it is unique and I've done a full diagnosis on Lee as well so if you want to look that up it's on the YouTube channel but the thing that Lee does phenomenally and I covered it in the video is the amount of tilt down at impact so we take a look at the height of his shoulders watch how much down he goes and at impact we have a huge amount of tilt but the hands are always ahead of that tilt maintaining his posture he actually increases his spine angle at impact he crunches down and that back brace line he actually gets past or beyond that back brace line by almost half a body width so that was is what makes his swing very unique and it is a timeless swing again it's not one I would emulate but he has an unusual grip as well to compensate that motion so your grip has to work in compensation with your body so don't change your grip unless you change your body and vice versa don't change your body unless you change your grip and finally the man of the hour and I think I've also done one on Jim Fury so if you have a moment check that out but we can see where his centeredness is and it's decent it's a little bit on his heels and we can see the toes sticking up in the sky but this is a great move as well because once he reaches that halfway point his centeredness watch the hands the hands go straight up from that centeredness so he feels where his center is and he comes on up now because it was heel based you can see that slight lower body lunge into the golf ball and when the knees are centered to each other pointed at the target we're going to see where the hip joint has found that center so this is why it's very important to set up correctly but if you don't set up correctly it doesn't mean your swing's over you can luck out and develop the motions around that so just because it doesn't look right doesn't mean it is wrong so be very careful when you start going down this youtube rabbit hole because if somebody were to change jim Furyk's swing when he was a kid or during his development as a teenager or early 20s we might never have heard of jim Furyk's. so bottom line when you are working with your swing make sure you're working with a reputable coach that understands cause and effect that understands that principles are 
needed in a golf swing, but not all principles are equal. Not all fundamentals are equal. Yes, they play a huge part. And yes, we teach a static fundamental and we work off of it. But I hope that does help free you up in your search for your swing correction. Don't go at this alone. I've corrected so many swings. I should actually thank YouTube for keeping golf instructors in business because we get a lot of students that fall down the YouTube rabbit hole and just completely ruin their motions and they need to come to a doctor for us to fix it. So hope that helps you. Don't forget tomorrow's Red Light Live series where we go and diagnose your submissions and we got a few of them up ready for you tomorrow, 8 o'clock Pacific Standard Time and also our 4,000 subscriber giveaway. We're about 300 people away. So if you do like this, hit that like, share, subscribe, help us get to that 4K because we're going to do a golf outing. We're going to invite eight of you to come on out, play some golf, have some fun and Make fun of each other's swings. Nah, that's not that good. But hope that helps you. See you next time. Ferris and Greens.